What's your greatest most satisfying I freaking called it moment? My husband is super medically fragile, he's had cancer twice and a bone marrow transplant in the last 9 years. A few years ago he had surgery on his wrist and I had a gut feeling he was brewing an infection despite being on antibiotics. His surgeon's office saw him and switched ABX. I contacted the cancer center because I just knew it was going to become more. They blow me off and punted back to the surgeon's office. I knew this was beyond the surgeon's scope. I pitched a tantrumy fit and pretty much told them they were going to see them and I wasn't accepting no for an answer. The Tridge phone nurse was condescending and telling me it was probably nothing and could wait. We got to the clinic and the nurse there started looking around the incision site. She told me that she believed my gut and pushed to admit him. The CT showed a huge infection that landed him in the hospital for a week on potent IV antibiotics with another surgery to clean out the site. Adding on, he is followed by a farmed in his BMT clinic as well as utilizes a pharmacy just for patients like him. It's not a retail pharmacy. He obviously has a lot of other issues too. And I'm just doing what a spouse is supposed to do. I'm no son and sometimes I lose my temper at both him and the situation. If there's anything I can beg of you all, please check in on older relatives if they're hospitalized or in homes and double check that their meds are correct and their medical history is right. We're lucky enough that I'm not older or confused, and that I'm astute enough to keep up with his info. Heck. I've made a few stumbles along the way and I'm reasonably intelligent. I can see how easy it could be to mess things up if someone wasn't capable. Well, I don't want to go into too many details, but I was friends with a groomer type. This was a guy who I had celebrated basketball championships with, who I had been to dinners with, who I had gone to parties with, but something felt off. Slight disclosure, I'm working in the youth department of a church at the time and he's the youth pastor. The I freaking called it moment happened when I go to the head pastor to say something's wrong. I think he's messing around with the girls, and I think he's a little unstable. So if someone doesn't put a stop to this, he is going to end up killing someone. I get kicked out for BS reasons. One year later, I'm part of a new church doing good work in the hood and helping raise money, clothing, that sort of thing for disadvantaged people. I get a call from one of the girls from that old church group. Turns out my old friend was hooking up with underage girls and ended up murdering one of them. Guy's in prison now. I'm just now realizing this thread is about the moment being satisfying. This moment was not satisfying. It only helped take a burden off of me because I thought maybe the head pastor was right and the problem had actually been me. Second edit. I'm not giving out any more details because there are young girls who attended there whose identities would be at risk if I gave the name. Any documentation that you talk to the head pastor, he deserves to be ratted out too for not even attempting to look into it. Drunkenly told my uncle's girlfriend she would be gone my Christmas at Thanksgiving. My uncle was a bit of a playboy and always had different semi-trashy women around. The best part is I didn't even know I said it, cause alcoholism. I found out when my dad told me at Christmas she went into rehab and they broke up maybe a week before Christmas. Hey you were right. About what? Maybe that was the catalyst to her insecurities leading back to drugs and eventually a destructive path which ruined the relationship. I once had a movie night with my best friend. She forced me to watch a romantic movie she loved and I wasn't in the mood. Anyway, we watched and after 5 or 10 minutes the girl protagonist says to the boy, Okay we can hang out, but do not fall in love with me, because I was P. This line kind of enerved me and sounded somehow suspicious I rudely said, I bet she has cancer. Well my BFF looked at me with a disappointed glare and as soon as half of the movie was over I knew why. She actually had cancer. Guess I'm a fortune teller now. In my first year in college, on my level 1 motor vehicle engineering course, we were being taught how to change spark plugs and adjust the timing on engines. So my then friend, we'll call him Ryan, is working with me on a 1998 Audi A3 1.8 Nontobo. We both agreed that I should do the timing, as I was more confident about it, which makes little sense thinking about it now, and that he wanted to remove the spark plugs. When he was taking out the first plug, I noticed that he wasn't very careful about it. For those of you who don't know much about cars, spark plugs are made of ceramic and metal, and the ceramic is easy to snap if you're not careful, and when it does, little pieces of ceramic will end up falling inside the cylinder. 
which, if the car is started, can cause serious damage to your engine. Anyways, I tell Ryan that he should be careful about taking out the spark plugs. He just says nah nah man it's fine, they're made of metal. I didn't reply as I noticed that he didn't give a crap about the job. So he unscrews the second spark plug and pulls really hard as he can't fully undo it. And right there, I hear the spark plug snap in half. And to top it off, the entire ceramic part of the spark plug fell inside the cylinder. I immediately told him to tell the tutor, which he of course didn't. So then after he moves away from the car, our tutor tells us to move the car to a different spot. I give Ryan the keys and say go on then, as I didn't have my license then. So he gets in and starts the car, and right from the start, me and the tutor can hear that something is knocking inside the engine, and before the tutor could tell Ryan to switch it off, we hear a very loud pop, and the engine stops by itself, right there and then, out loud I looked Ryan straight in the eyes and said I freaking called it you dickhead, he got kicked off the course since this was an actual teacher's car, anyone saying that this could also be my fault for the car getting fricked, you're not wrong. I'm glad I've changed since then. Comma he got kicked off the course since this was an actual teacher's car. I blame the teacher. There's always at least one idiot in a class. If it's first year it'll be at least a third of the class. And first semester probably closer to two thirds. No way in frick am I letting a first year student work on something as expensive as an engine without my direct supervision. I still relish that I was right about this. That show 19 kids and counting. Over Thanksgiving one year two of my aunts got talking about it and were just raving about how amazing they thought it was and what a great family they had. I pretty much said something to the degree of nope. That's not normal. Those kids are essentially raising each other and I guarantee you that something is not right. They completely dismissed me. Said I didn't know what I was talking about because I don't watch the show, etc. When the news eventually broke that one was molesting some of the others I felt so vindicated. But my absolute favorite moment was the next Thanksgiving where at the dinner table I got to say so how about that Duggar family huh? Dead silence from my aunts. But I had a crap eating grin on my face from ear to ear. My younger step bro took a job with his friend's dad's company right out of college. Good money. But it was in Arkansas. Turns out the dad is friends with the Duggars and step bro met ms daddy Duggar, numerous times. Said they were both attention hungry and creepy af. When I was in 6th grade, I became friends with a couple other girls in my neighborhood. We each had completely different backgrounds, but we just clicked. For years, we three did all the things good friends do. The only thing I, personally, didn't like was to stay over at the house of one of these girls. I'll call her Brianna. I'd sleep over at the other girl's house. They could sleep at mine. But I always came up with an excuse not to stay at Brianna's. She started to get her feelings hurt but I ignored it. Then when we were all about 16, somebody go a hold of liquor. And we all sat around drinking. Being drunk. We got into a little debate about who is better friends with who. And I was somehow accused of not liking Brianna as much as the other friend because I wouldn't spend much time at her house. Since I had zero filter at that moment, I blurted out, Brianna, it isn't you, it's your dad, he's a diddler, I can tell just by looking at him, as soon as I said it, everything changed, I apologized, that didn't work of course, both of my best girlfriends dumped me that day, I still had a solid best friend, but I had to get myself a new group for sure, also, they started bullying me a bit, but I just took it because of the horrible thing I said about Brianna's dad. I felt super guilty. Three years later, I was out of high school, living with my best friend who was still friends with Brianna. I got home from class and there was Brianna sitting on the living room couch. It was so uncomfortable. I decided to try to apologize again. Hey, I know you are probably sick of hearing this, but I am so very sorry for what I said about your dad, Brianna. Please forgive me. I still don't know why I'd say such a thing. She sort of chuckled and said, it's no big deal. He physically summed all of us. I never questioned my intuition again. Because I freaking called it the second I saw that perv. Bias. I believe she meant all of the daughters in the family. There were three. I don't know if any of my former friends were physically summed. Last I heard, I was still a crap talker about her dad and I wasn't going to correct them and humiliate her again. I figure she can tell who she wants. 
No, I'm not proud that I called her dad a diddler. It all came out because her younger sister said something to her church minister, but he was never brought into the criminal justice system and Brianna moved out of state. She and I remained friendly and kept in touch for several years but lost contact. I still do feel really bad about saying that about her dad to her. It was a crappy thing to say. I could have kept it to myself and just stayed away from their house but drunk me doesn't do that I guess. I'm surprised at all the people who are responding that they have a similar story. I'd like to read them. That's probably why they were bullying you. Too scared to admit. In Canada we have a holiday called Family Day in February. In 2008 my wife was dealing with a sick family member out of town and had come back for a visit. We were trying to have a child at the time. Well with our crazy schedules we had one chance on family day. The moment we were done, I jumped up, gave her the double finger guns, first time in my life, and said bam, you're pregnant, twin girls, red hair. Turns out I got everything right except the hair. Her Italian jeans beat me in that one. I win for our entire marriage with that prediction. I want to brag to my wife I got gold. But I did not clear posting this with her. So conflicting. Gold versus living. I'd be careful with your finger guns. First week that my GF started at an all girls college. She's getting hit on by this girl. H. GF plays it off. They're just friendly blah blah. I told her less than 30 days she is gonna confess to you. Fast forward like 2 weeks. H invited GF over to her dorm to play some Xbox. My GF went over. Totally ready to play some Left 4 Dead 2. H was totally ready to play around with my GF's lady bits. GF left feeling embarrassed and confused. A man can always tell when someone is flirting with their so. Even when they can't. I can usually tell when someone is flirting with my husband. He's oblivious. He even admits to it. I honestly think that if it hadn't been for me asking our mutual friend if we would be a good match literal days before he asked the same friend if she thought I would agree to a date, we might have never gotten together. I'm incredibly unassertive. It was New Year's Eve. We were about to do the firework and me and my friend wanted to set up the box for the firework. Just putting 4 bricks around it to keep it safe and start the firework. Then this girl came and said she was gonna do it cause she bought it. We told her how to do it and she said nah it'll just start it up. I told her don't blame me when it tips over and starts shooting at us she said it won't happen. That's exactly what happened. The firework just tipped over and started shooting at cars and people. I just calmly walked up to her and said I told you so. Not me but two of my friends. M and D. E. Our other friend I got married to a woman he'd been seeing for about 3 years. M and D e were talking about it. And they agreed that R would go through a midlife crisis. Leave his wife and shack up with someone new after having kids. This was in 2008. Six months ago, R texted me saying he'd left his wife and two kids and needed a place to crash. He's met someone else. I told him of this, and he uttered the words I called it. I watched Saw 2 in the theater with some friends in high school. I hadn't seen the first one, and didn't know anything about it. But about half an hour into the movie, I told my friends that Amanda was working with Jigsaw. They all said no way, and told me that it wasn't possible and I just didn't understand cause I hadn't seen the first one. When that twist got revealed, they were glaring daggers at me, and I was giving them the biggest told you so smile I could. After watching the second one, I told all my friends that Dr. Gordon was alive and working with Jigsaw 2, and that he was the one that implanted the key into the snitch's head. I held on to this theory for 5 years until it was proven right in Saw 7 equals D. My little brother proposed to a girl he was only dating for a year. I told him to get a prenup. He declined. She left him a little more than a month after the wedding. He said are you going to say I told you so and I got to say I don't have to. Told my GF at the time that her best guy friend is into her. She kept saying she only saw him as her gay best friend and he only sees her as a sister. Well she ended up cheating on me with him and they started dating after I broke up with her. I like to think I won that argument. When my uncle was diagnosed as a narcissist by his marriage counselor, I have literally been saying for years he has all the dang signs. Lack of empathy, lashing out when someone corrects him, two-tier social system, 
an inability to see the world in shades of grey, an inability to see anything from outside his own perspective, etc, etc. I'd already let my mom and one of his sons know about my suspicions, so it was so satisfying to be right, they had their time to come to terms with it, and the ways his disorder caused them pain, long before the rest of the family, plus, it meant I wasn't scaring them with a disorder he didn't have. Back in March I was driving home for lunch. I live in a place with snow during winter and we had had a decent snowfall, followed by a warm day. Anyways as I'm driving, some idiot turns in front of me with a 6 inch layer of snow on their roof. I wished with my whole heart that they would suffer consequences for their stupidity. Fast forward 5 minutes and all the snow cascades down onto their windshield as they attempt to roll a stop sign. I relished pointing and laughing as I drove around them, while well, they had to switch to park, get out of the vehicle and try to brush off all the snow in a live lane. After breaking up with my first girlfriend she rebounded with a very sketchy dude at her work. Within a month he was living with her, and she had become a completely different person. I tried warning her she was being gaslit and manipulated. Her friends tried, but the dude had his teeth sunk in too deep. After 6 months he dropped the act and made up an elaborate story about his mother, who he had previously said died of cancer, having faked her death and being alive in California. So he left for a week at which point he stopped all contact with my ex. She panicked and came to me saying she was worried, and within days his entire construction fell like a house of cards. My ex was devastated and I was too angry to be vindicated. I broke up with her but still cared for her. I spent about 3 months following up with her and taking care of her until she was able to be on her own again. The events themselves were traumatic and awful, but the feeling I got from knowing I wasn't wrong about him, and that I proved to my ex she could still trust me and be my friend, was worth it. We are still best friends today. I liked the last part about you two still being best friends. Very wholesome. In 1999, I gave a talk in which I said, within about 3 years, more than half of the new internet based companies will be bankrupt or merged. I correctly predicted that two friends of mine were going to get married before either of them had even met each other, as far as I know, they were both single, had both just taken teaching jobs that happened to be at the same school and I thought to myself yeah, that's gonna happen. Thanksgiving day a year ago, not this past Thanksgiving, the one before, I was watching the parade on NBC and when I saw Matt Lower I told my family I bet he would be the next higher level guy to fall to the Me Too movement. I've read page 6 for years and there were stories hinting at his bad behavior for years. Sure enough, a couple days later he was fired, no prior warning. It was a very satisfying moment. Buddy of mine was being a really bad freaking man whore. So I told him hey man like I get that it's fun and all but you need to slow the frick down and not sleep with literally everything that throws themselves at his feet because he's gonna catch some crap. Sure enough, dude finds out he is chlamydia a few weeks after the fact and I had my little ha told you so dumbass moment. The best part was after we were done talking about it I said well, glad you caught that. Wait lem rephrase. Very topical. I saw Pro Jared and Holly Conrad walking around together on the show floor at PAX Unplugged this past November. I didn't think much of it because they were both there for a D&D podcast recording I believe. I made a joke to my friend at the time about how wouldn't it be funny if they were hiding a secret relationship. My co-workers Ben and Jill had just started dating, and Valentine's was coming up. I asked Ben, so, did you book a romantic reservation for dinner he said. Oh, no, Jill said she didn't want to do that, so we're going to just do something casual. I said, dude, just book a reservation, and then cancel it if you don't need it. He got a panic look in his eyes, and told me he would. After Valentine's he told me, at the last minute, Jill admitted that she wanted to do something romantic. Thanks for the advice, they're married now, have beautiful kids. What can I say except, you're welcome. At the end of Captain America, the first Avenger, Red Skull is disintegrated by the Tesseract. I always had a weird feeling about how it was done, specifically because it looks almost exactly like the Bifrest magic. I always, always held that he wasn't disintegrated, 
but was taken somewhere. Cut to Infinity War. Turns out the Tesseract banished him to Vormir to be the keeper of the Soul Stone for all eternity. During opening night while everyone was gasping, my single solitary voice involuntarily shouted I freaking told you. I love this one the most. Good job sticking to your guns. When the MMA fighter Ronda Rousey was undefeated and kicked the crap out of everybody, I called Holly home knocking her out. I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm not sure if it was satisfying since I'm not a Red Sox, but in 2004 when they came back from behind to win game 4 of the ALCS, being down 3-0 in the series, I said they were going to go all of the way. Figuring if they were ever going to break their curse it would have to be in some grand fashion, not some boring way where they're just the best team and easily win it all. Well the Red Sox were the second highest payroll that year, behind the Yankees and were pretty much loaded with talent. They had a $125 million payroll versus the Cardinals $75. The Sox were stacked. On paper they really didn't have anyone close to them after the Yankees caved. My bad. Didn't realize you called the Sox after game 4. Yes, you're right. That was indeed a great I called it moment. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.